In this video, I'm going to demonstrate my uh, latex workflow, which is probably not of great interest to most people, but might be of minor interest to a couple. I'll, will, I'm working in this case on a Mac. I have the, I believe, Mac Tech uh, distribution installed, and I have uh, a set of latex uh, make files and helper scripts that are in they are in a GitHub repository. I'll put a link to that in the in the uh, notes. So in that latex repository, which I have in my path, I have a couple little scripts. Uh, the most useful of those is this LT script. I've got some scripts also for generating blog post contents from standard LaTeX uh, and some make files and make file fragments. So I have, if I, if I uh, create a make file uh, using my template, it's got some basic rules and I'll create a file here. With some standard junk in it, most of that I don't need. So I have I have my own set of of uh, STYs with various macros and some prolog stuff and proamble and so forth. And once I use this, so here is a basic framework that I have. I have braces here for brace matching in case I screw up with my nesting of, of braces and macros or other latex and then I can use the VI to navigate between them and find out if I've got things wrong. Uh, and then the I what I do is I run my little latex template script and say for this file and this is within VI, so percent expands to the current file name. For this file, I want an equation, say. Boom, I have an equation. It has a dummy label that I can modify. And I could also do something like a DMAT environment, which is quite nice if you want to do multiple line stuff. Let's say I want A equals B plus C, and equals, uh, 2x plus y equals 2z minus n. So for something like that, I can not worry about a line environment, and it should typeset things for me nicely on multiple lines. Let's try that out. Now, I'm going to run my make file, and it copies in my styles and other stuff, and then eventually will invoke Latex MK. Latex MK is the workhorse that you should use for building Latex stuff. So I say Latex make minus PDF with some options. Uh, I want error messages with line numbers, file and line numbers, and I want to use sync text equals one. The reason for sync text equals one is that I can use a, a PDF browser and then click on a section of the source in that PDF to get back to where I was in the late, in the, in the original source. So let's try that. The Latex MK does everything that's required. It reruns la the Latex file as many times as needed, doing all the steps like bibliographies and so forth. And now I have a demo with a PDF. Once I have that, can open with skim. And there's my, let's expand that. So I had my DMATH environment does the multiple line formatting uh, automatically without me having to mess around with a line. So but let's say I want to mess around with a line for, for whatever reason, because DMATH screws up in some cases. So I do 
control, oops, that's, that was alt click, which is control click on the Mac. I'm gonna try control click. Ah, there we go. So that was shift command click. Let's see, double check that. Okay, shift command click was the magic sequence. And then that pops me up into the code and usually pops me right into the formula, but let's see if I move away from that point. Okay. Anyways, it, it's a, you can go back from your PDF into your source. There's a, there's a Windows uh, uh, PDF viewer uh, that also does that. It starts with a K. It's an impossible, impossible Polish kind of name with Ks and Zs and Ys. Uh, don't remember what it is, but I'll I'll look it up and put it in the in the notes afterwards. But let's say I wanted to turn this into uh, an equation with a line instead. Stepped on the path. So if I have an equation instead of D math, put in the line, put in line continuation, and so forth. Here is line stuff. Now let's add another equation without a line and x squared dx equals half of not half, third x cubed. Uh, a couple equations and my latex template script fills in just dollar and the colon ends and I generate a little file called renumber that runs some other stuff. I can go do that, say yes, load. And now my my labels are all auto auto numbered accordingly. I guess I could probably have my generation script do that for me, but I Never bothered trying to do that. Let's go and rebuild this. Nice thing about the skim browser on Mac is that it auto refreshes. So I automatically get my, uh, I don't have to close the file and then reopen it like I do with Acrobat. So let's, let's use this to make something real. Um, the, I'll do the intersection of two lines in geometric algebra. Uh, easy kind of computation. And I'm actually not going to keep using MacVim here. I really like just using a terminal. All right. So suppose we have. A equation uh, bx plus b by b c. I use abc as my variables, and in my macros, I have boldface macros like. Math bold face A. So this gives me an easy way of typesetting a vector. Uh, if I wanted to have a vector look like a vector uh, over vector, I could I could change the macro and then not have to change the code. So it gives me a way of decoupling things. So if I have an equation like this, and I want to solve this for x and y. Uh, how would I go about doing that? So uh, one way to do it is to, if this was a, if my vectors were two-dimensional, I could use Kramer's rule. My vectors are 
say four dimensional, I can't use Kramer's rule, but what I can do is I can take the wedge product. So if, let's say, given a two variable problem, we can wedge with A or B to remove dependencies on the other. So let's go edge this equation with A. Now, the, the, uh, this style, this is a equivalent to dollars but I like this better because it has a beginning and end that you can parse. So if you want to turn this into a different style of latex, like for uh, math.stackexchange or something like that, you can have a script that that makes those kinds of transformations. So I, I, use, uh, I use something like this. I don't use the dollars to denote my inline latex. I, instead, I use the beginning and end symbols but they're equivalent. All right, so we go back to this problem. We want to wedge everything with a, now use a left-right brace macro. And use a lot of macros, and you'll gradually accumulate those over time. So my left right, for example, says left brace contents right brace. So this way I have an easy way that I don't have to to worry about putting lefts and rights in to automatically resize the, the braces if if I want them. I just have my macro do that for me. And so So that's what we wedge with A, but because we have A and A here, this term is canceled because A wedge A is zero. And so we are left with we're left with Y B B wedged with A. Is B wedged away. So let's look go and look at what this looks like in the browser. I'll just run my renumber, make. All right, so we have our equation. We wedged everything with A, we killed our XA term, and we're left with an equation for Y, which we can solve by division. And it would look better if we cancel the whole thing XBA. All right, so once we do that, now we have solution for Y if it exists. Which is, Y is the fraction of B wedge A over G wedge, C wedge A over B wedge A. And similarly, we can wedge our equation with B. So now if we wedge with B, we have uh, A wedge B and a B wedge B. B wedge B is zero, which is killed. So we have B wedge C or C wedge B. So let's just write this out. And we can skip, skip steps this time. So 
Okay, so here is an example of mismatch braces. And that's why it's useful to have an end point. So you can do or do it without even thinking. Shift five, yeah. If I do a percent sign, it gives me brace matching. Get. This. So C wedge B divided by A wedge B is our X value. So you basically you see that we have a Kramer's rule structure here. Boom, we have some latex easily uh, generated. We have auto numbering for our lines. 